Here are 25 most asked technical interview questions for a data science interview, along with informative answers to help you prepare. 1. What is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning? Answer. In supervised learning, model is trained on labeled data, learning to make predictions or classifications based on known outcomes. In unsupervised learning, the model works with unlabeled data to identify patterns, clusters, or relationships. 2. Can you explain the bias-variance trade-off in the context of machine learning? Answer. The bias-variance trade-off is a key concept. High bias underfitting occurs when a model is too simple and doesn't capture the underlying patterns. High variance overfitting happens when a model is overly complex and fits the noise in the data. Balancing bias and variance is crucial for optimal model performance. 3. What is cross-validation, and why is it important in machine learning? Answer. Cross-validation is a technique used to assess a model's performance. By splitting the data into training and testing sets multiple times. It helps evaluate how well a model generalizes to unseen data and mitigates issues like overfitting. 4. What is feature engineering, and why is it important in machine learning? Answer. Feature engineering is the process of selecting, creating, or transforming features in the data set to improve model performance. Effective feature engineering enhances the model's ability to capture relevant patterns in the data. 5. Explain the concept of overfitting and how it can be prevented. Answer. Overfitting occurs when a model learns the training data too well and struggles to generalize. Preventing overfitting can be done through techniques like cross-validation, feature selection regularization, and using simpler models. 6. What is the purpose of regularization in machine learning, and how does it work? Answer. Regularization is used to prevent overfitting by adding a penalty term to the model's loss function. It discourages overly complex models by adding a cost for large coefficients, leading to simpler, more generalizable models. 7. Can you explain the bias-variance trade-off in the context of model selection? Answer. The bias-variance trade-off applies to choosing the model complexity. High bias models are too simple and may underfit, while high variance models are overly complex and may overfit. The goal is to find a balance that minimizes both bias and variance, resulting in the best model. 8. What is the curse of dimensionality, and how does it affect data analysis? Answer. The curse of dimensionality refers to the challenges that arise as the number of features or dimensions in the data increases. It can lead to increased computational complexity, data sparsity, and difficulties in finding meaningful patterns. Dimensionality reduction techniques like PCA can help mitigate these issues. 9. Explain the differences between precision and recall. When would you use one over the other? Answer. Precision measures the accuracy of positive predictions, while recall measures the ability to find all positive instances. The choice between them depends on the problem's specific needs. Use precision when false positives are costly, and use recall when false negatives are costly. 10. Can you describe the rock curve and awk in the context of binary classification? Answer. The rock receiver operating characteristic curve is a graph that shows the trade-off between true positive rate sensitivity and false positive rate when specificity as the classification threshold varies. The AUK area under the curve summarizes the rock curve with higher AUK values indicating better model performance. 11. What is feature selection, and what are some common techniques to perform it? Answer. Feature selection is the process of choosing a subset of the most relevant features for modeling. Common techniques include filter methods, for example, correlation, wrapper methods, for example, recursive feature elimination, and embedded methods, for example, L1 regularization. 12. Explain the k-means clustering algorithm. How does it work, and what are its limitations? Answer. 
K means is an unsupervised clustering algorithm that groups data points into K clusters based on similarity. It works by iteratively assigning points to the nearest cluster center and updating the center. Its limitations include sensitivity to initializations, difficulties with non-spherical clusters, and the need to specify the number of clusters. K. 13. What is the purpose of the naive Bayes classifier, and how does it work? Answer. The naive Bayes classifier is used for classification tasks especially in text and language processing. It works by applying Bayes' theorem with the assumption that features are conditionally independent. It's computationally efficient and performs well for text classification tasks, but may not be suitable for complex data with correlated features. 14. Can you explain the differences between bagging and boosting in ensemble learning? Answer. Bagging, bootstrap aggregating, and boosting are ensemble learning techniques. Bagging creates multiple base models in parallel and combines their predictions, while boosting creates models sequentially, giving more weight to instances that the previous models misclassified. Boosting typically achieves better predictive performance, but can be more prone to overfitting. 15. What is the purpose of Principal Component Analysis PCA? and how does it work? Answer. PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique used to transform data into a new coordinate system with orthogonal axis principal components. It reduces dimensionality while preserving as much variance as possible. PCA is particularly useful when dealing with high dimensional data or to remove multicollinearity. 16. Explain the concept of bias in data and algorithms. How can bias be addressed in machine learning? Answer. Bias in data or algorithms refers to systematic errors or prejudices that can lead to unfair or discriminatory outcomes. Bias can be addressed by collecting more diverse and representative data, carefully selecting features, and using fairness-aware algorithms that consider demographic or sensitive attributes. 17. Describe the steps involved in the data preprocessing pipeline for a typical machine learning project. Answer. Data preprocessing typically involves steps like data cleaning handling missing values, outliers, data transformation feature scaling coding categorical variables, and feature engineering creating new features or representations. It's essential for ensuring data quality and compatibility with machine learning algorithms. 18. Can you explain the differences between L1 and L2 regularization in linear regression? Answer. L1 regularization adds a penalty term based on the absolute values of coefficients, promoting sparsity. L2 regularization adds a penalty term based on the square of coefficients, discouraging large values. L1 tends to produce sparse models, while L2 provides smoother models. 19. What are hyperparameters in machine learning, and how do you tune them for model optimization? Answer. Hyperparameters are parameters of the machine learning model that are not learned from the data, but are set prior to training. Hyperparameter tuning involves systematically searching different combinations of hyperparameters to find the optimal settings, often using techniques like grid search or random search. 20. Explain the concept of imbalanced datasets in classification tasks. How can you address the challenges of imbalanced data? Answer. Imbalanced datasets have an unequal distribution of class labels making it challenging for machine learning models to learn the minority class. Techniques to address this issue include resampling methods like oversampling the minority class, undersampling the majority class, and using specialized algorithms like Smote synthetic minority oversampling technique. 21. What is the purpose of a decision tree in machine learning, and how does it work? Answer. Decision tree is a supervised learning algorithm used for classification and regression tasks. It works by recursively partitioning the data into subsets based on the most significant attribute at each node, ultimately leading to a decision or prediction. 
22. Explain the concept of p-value in statistics. What is its significance in hypothesis testing? Answer. The p-value is a measure of the evidence against a null hypothesis. In hypothesis testing, a small p-value typically below a significance level, for example 0.05, suggests strong evidence against the null hypothesis, indicating that the observed results are unlikely to have occurred by chance. 23. Can you describe the differences between R squared and adjusted R squared in linear regression? Answer. R squared measures the proportion of variance explained by the independent variables in a linear regression model. Adjusted R squared accounts for the number of predictors in the model, penalizing the inclusion of irrelevant variables. It helps assess the model's fit while considering model complexity. 24. What is the purpose of a confusion matrix, and how can it be used to assess the performance of a classification model? Answer. A confusion matrix is a table that summarizes the results of a classification model, showing true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives. From the confusion matrix, various metrics such as accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score can be calculated to evaluate model performance. 25. Describe the process of handling missing data in a dataset. What are common techniques for imputing missing values? Answer. Handling missing data involves identifying, analyzing, and addressing missing values. Common techniques for imputing missing values include mean or median imputation, forward or backward fill, k-nearest neighbors imputation, and using predictive models to estimate missing values based on other features. These 25 technical questions and answers should help you prepare for data science interviews. By demonstrating your proficiency in machine learning, statistics, data preprocessing, and other technical aspects of the field. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and web stack development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most. Asked interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.